This is a trucker and a motor company founder absolutely destroying the liberal narrative on why we all need to get rid of our cars and switch over to electric vehicles in about two seconds. Do you ever see yourself going 100% EV? No. And why not? I mean, maybe. If battery technology gets better, grid infrastructure gets better. But like this truck, like a logging truck uses about two and a half megawatts of power per day. With extra capacity in the battery means you need a three megawatt battery pack. The biggest one is like a Tesla Semi, which is like a one megawatt. Like, so you need three megawatts to run an electric truck. That would mean you would need to pack 50,000 pounds, 40, 50,000 pounds of batteries just to do a full day. And then let's say we can even get those batteries down to the same weight where it's reasonable. The grid infrastructure, we haven't invested in our electrical grid since the 1950s, 1960s, 70s. Like, did you give me an example? Logging trucks in BC, that's a niche industry. There's a 5,000 logging trucks that haul logs at two and a half megawatts of consumption per day. That's 12 and a half gigawatts of power. Site C Dam has been under construction for the last, oh, I don't know, 15 years at a cost of $20 billion. And that has a 1.1 gigawatt. So a $20 billion dam that takes 15 years to build has a 1.1 gigawatt capacity and logging trucks, just logging trucks alone are using 12 and a half gigawatts. You would have to flood an area of land the size of Wales to produce that hydropower. I love it. It goes on, by the way. But it is so refreshing to see knowledge and competence. And it's especially delightful when the knowledge and competence are exhibited by someone who is looked down on and dismissed by society. This is a white dude up in Canada, America's evil top hat. And he's not wearing fancy clothes. He's just wearing flannels. And he's out there. He's not in a fancy office at the penthouse, top floor of a skyscraper. He's just there in a field with some big trucks. And he's interviewed and he's asked, hey, why don't you want to switch all the way over to electric vehicles? He goes, well, yeah, I don't think I'm going to end up doing that. And you know what the liberal audience says. They're going to say, oh, here we go. <laughs> Here's this big, dumb, rube idiot. He's probably a climate change denier. He, this guy, what does he know? He's just prejudiced. He's just tied to his old ways because he likes big, scary sounding trucks. Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah. Tell me why you don't want to switch to electric. He's like, well, you know, uh, here's a boot. The reason why I don't think so, eh, is because uh, the batteries need to be three megawatts, but the largest battery at the moment is produced by Tesla. It's one megawatt, so it'd actually be worse for the environment. It'd be, uh, uh, given the weight of it, it would be completely inefficient. It would be impossible. And then if a train leaves St. Louis going 400 miles an hour at, at 11.30 in the morning, and then, and he just goes on, and you realize, wow, this guy knows so much more than any of the climate alarmist people. Well, there's a story I wanted to get to, I guess we'll have to get to it later, of, of these radical environmentalists. You know, the ones who paint themselves all sorts of colors and throw soup on famous paintings and smash them up and glue themselves to the street. Those guys, according to our ridiculous, ignorant culture, those guys are the smart ones. They're the science followers. And that guy who can recite to you every statistic, every fact about the operation of these engines, about the dams, about the way energy is produced, about the various manufacturers of electric vehicles, that guy's a big, dumb, stupid idiot because he doesn't believe that the sun monster is going to kill us all in 10 years if we don't throw soup on Van Gogh and glue ourselves to the sidewalk. That is how flipped we are. Because, you know, those guys who glue themselves, they probably have a PhD, you know? <laughs> And that entrepreneur and trucker, who knows? He might not even have studied sociology in graduate school. Right now, go to roughgreens.com slash Michael. The holidays are coming up fast. While you're out shopping for your kids, your family, your friends, don't forget to shop for your pets too. Give your dog the gift of a healthier and happier life with Rough Greens. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is focused on improving the health of every dog in America. Dog food may as well be considered dead food because it contains very little in the way of nutrition. Think about it. Nutrition's not brown, it's green. Let Rough Greens bring your dog's food back to life. Rough Greens is a supplement that contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs. You don't have to go out and buy new dog food. You just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every day. Dog owners everywhere are raving about Rough Greens. It supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, boosts energy levels, and so much more. My stepbrother, I sent him rough greens for his dog, a little Australian Shepherd. And he said the dog is now extremely right wing, too, which I think I was a side effect. I didn't know that that would happen. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black is so confident that rough greens will improve your dog's health. 
He's offering a free Jumpstart trial bag to you so your dog can try it. Get that free Jumpstart trial bag delivered straight to your door in just a few business days. Roughgreens.com slash Michael or call 844-ROUGH, R-U-F-F, one, two, three. Roughgreens.com slash Michael or call 844-ROUGH, R-U-F-F, one, two, three, today. DeSantis just had a very good answer to one of the sillier but still more significant criticisms of his campaign, namely that he wears high heels. This has been a meme going around for a while. It seems ridiculous and frivolous. I haven't even really wanted to address this this claim because I think it's so crazy, but it has persisted and it's grown uh, even louder. So finally, Eric Bowling was just asking Governor DeSantis about the high heels. Here's the governor's answer. I've been watching over the last, I don't know, maybe 10 days or so. And there are these gotcha people, these people who just want to sit there and they want to talk about how tall you are, whether you're wearing boots <laughs> with, with uh, what do they call it, heel extenders inside. I mean, I mean, uh, Governor, the southern border is a disaster. It's, it, terrorists are coming across the border. We got two wars that we're kind of funding, and they want to talk about how tall you are. Sir, t- respond, please. <laughs> well, yeah, I, like, look, Eric, this, uh, this is no time for foot fetishes. We've got serious <laughs> problems as a country. I know uh, Donald Trump and a lot of his people have been focusing um, on things like footwear. I'll tell you this. Um, you know, if Donald Trump can summon the balls to show up to the debate, I'll wear a boot on my head. <laughs> I'll wear a boot on my head. This is no time for foot fetishes. That's a funny line. That's a funny, that's a good line. The issue is he should have had that line in place a week ago. He should have had that line in place when he was on the podcast with Patrick Bet David. The DeSantis campaign, I don't blame DeSantis necessarily, but his campaign needs to anticipate these things. Whether or not he's wearing boot extenders or heels and whatever. Certainly, if you're going to wear those things, and even if you're not, you need to anticipate those questions being asked and have good zingers, especially when you're going up against the guy who has the best zingers in politics, certainly since Reagan, probably even better than Reagan's. It's just this feeling for a lot of people, I think, that Man, DeSantis, is, he's good. He's a great governor. He's had great policies. He's, but he's just, he doesn't quite have it on the campaign trail. I'm not even saying that's my view. I'm not endorsing in the primary. You know, I, lo- I like Donald Trump a lot. I really like Ron DeSantis. And I like some other people in the race also. I'm, I'm not prescribing, but merely describing what's going on in the race and why this campaign has not caught on. It's just a little a little bit off. It's just a little bit too slow. It doesn't quite make the sale. Boy, what a great clip that was. Now, hey, 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 man. Ring that bell. Subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.